Do you want to build a turret in Unreal Engine 5 that actually tracks the player, has bullet trails, impact the effects, and even stops firing when you take cover? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this fully functional turret from scratch, complete with range detection, smooth tracking, muzzle flash, and smart line of sight logic. And in this video, I'll walk you through everything step by step. We'll import things like the free assets for the turret. We'll set up the base materials, create all the blueprint logic for the tracking, firing, and line of sight. And yes, all the assets are free to download from the link in the description and can be used commercially in your own projects. So whether you're building a shooter game, tower defense, or just want to level up your Unreal Engine 5 skills, this turret system is a perfect addition to your game. And if you want to learn more about making games in Unreal Engine, I have a full 70 hour course that will show you how to make a complete multiplayer survival game from scratch. We're talking drag and drop inventory system, crafting mechanics, base building system, open world map, harvesting system, clans and raiding, multiplayer proximity, voice chat, saving and loading, and even showing you how to set up a dedicated server and host it in the cloud. This is the most comprehensive course on how to make a multiplayer game inside of Unreal Engine that you'll find on the internet. So head over to my website, smartpoly.teachable.com to enroll in the course and kickstart your game development journey today. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, so the first thing you need to do is launch Unreal Engine 5.5. So go ahead and launch it. And while we're waiting for this to open, you want to download the project files in the description of the video. Then once Unreal Engine is open, you can go ahead and create a new game. I'm going to select the third person template. You can choose any template you'd like and then just go ahead and name your project and click create. So once you have your project open we're going to create a new folder in our content browser called turret and you want to make sure it's actually spelled the same way because we're going to drag in some assets in here but first let's go into here and create a new folder for mesh and just double click open this up and with the project files once you extract the files you should have the fbx files the textures and this folder over here. We're going to first take the mesh and import these so take the fbx files drag and drop them. It's going to pop open with the import content window. These are all of my settings. I'm not going to change anything. So go ahead and click import. It should import the mesh. Want to override. Let's just click yes on this. And we should have the texture imported as well. Okay, I'm going to import the rest of the texture. So let's drag and drop all of these should import all that. Then open up the material, this M turret. We're going to modify the materials in here. I'm actually going to delete all of this and just reset this up myself. Just select all of these materials, drag and drop them to make this full screen. So this is the base color. Then we have the metallic, which is this white color. This is the roughness, this gray texture. And then this blue texture is the normal map. So go ahead and save that. And now we should have our turret. So file, save all. We have the turret base and the turret, the top part of the turret. So basically this top part will sit up here and will rotate or face the player. So let's go ahead and set up the blueprint for this. So we can delete that and head back over to our turret folder and create a new blueprint class of the type actor. Since this will be a simple blueprint actor, we'll name this to BP underscore turret and double click open this up. So inside of this blueprint, we're going to add the mesh, but first we want to add a sphere for the collision. So add a sphere. We want to have a sphere collision so we can detect, you know, if there's a player nearby. And this will be, you know, how far we can detect the other player. So we want to set this to 16 for the radius, just to give it you know, a large radius around the turret itself. Then we're going to add a static mesh component. Okay. We can drag the static mesh on the scene root and attach it. That way they're you know, separate from each other. So, you know, they're not attached to each other. Then for the static mesh, we can set this to the turret base mesh. Okay. And then to add another static mesh on top of this, we want to add onto the static mesh another component. So it should be like this. This one will be the turret turret top. So this turret mesh right over here. Okay, so I'm going to move this up like so, and that should be good for the position. And I'm actually going to rename this component to the turret top, just like that, and compile and save. Now let's head over to the vent graph because we're gonna set up the logic for the turret to detect the player and shoot the player. So first thing that we'll need to do is delete all these events. We don't need any of that stuff. But what we wanna do is select our sphere component. And whenever the player overlaps with the sphere, we wanna add an event, be an overlap. So under the details, add a event, begin overlap. And we just wanna check and see if this is the player. So we're going to off the other actor, check and see first of all, if it is valid. So we'll do a is valid check. Okay, if it is valid, then we want to check and see if it's a player. So we can do that by either checking if it has a specific tag or casting to it. In my case, I'll use the actor has tag node and check and see if it has a tag named player. OK, 
Okay, then we can add a branch by pressing B and adding that for the condition. So if it is a player, then we can go ahead and save this actor reference. We can promote this to a variable and call this the target because this is the target that we need to track. Now that a player has overlap and has gotten in the range of the turret, we can start tracking and moving the turret around. So we can rotate this turret to face and track the player's movement. So to do that, we're going to add an event. We're going to add a custom event down here, call this track target, and we can compile. And we wanna call this up here once we have a target. So we're gonna call the track target. Okay, so just make sure that you compile before you call this event, otherwise you'll get an error. So just make sure that you compile before that. Then let's go ahead and add a comment for this because this is our when C player set target, okay? Now for our track target, we need to add some movement so that this turret will track the player. So instead of using an event tick, we're gonna use a timer. So we'll use the set timer by event. And for the timer by event, you need to bind this to an event. So you wanna drag over here and add a custom event called move turret, whatever you like to call it, but in this case, I'll just call it that. And you want to set a time. So every 0.05 seconds, we're going to set this to looping. So it's gonna keep firing this off over and over and over. And we're gonna do max once per frame. Then we wanna save a reference to this timer. So take the return value, promote that to a variable and just save this and call this timer ref. So it'll just be a reference to the timer that's firing off. Okay, so for our move turret event, all we need to do is get our target. This is the actor reference that we're saving. I wanna check and see if it is valid. Just double check, make sure that it's valid reference. And if it is a valid reference, we wanna go ahead and move our turret. So to move our turret, we're going to get the turret top mesh, this mesh component. Let's get that on the graph and we're going to use a set relative, set relative rotation. We'll set the rotation of the turret. And for this rotation, we wanna right click and split this so that we can access all axes because we don't really want to rotate this in all directions. Like for example, we don't wanna rotate it in the X direction like this. We just wanna rotate it on the Z. So that's why we go ahead and split that. Let's hook up the execution for the is valid. Then to go ahead and calculate the rotation, what we'll need to do is take our target, the character we're tracking, we wanna get that actor location, get the location of our target. Then we're going to get our own location, get actor location of ourself, and we're going to find the look at rotation. Basically, this will take our location versus our target's location and find what rotation we should rotate to. Then in order to rotate our turret to the new rotation, we want to get our turret top, get the relative rotation of that, and we're going to smoothly rotate or reinterpolate to that. So we're going to call the R interp, R interp to a node. And what this does is it blends between our current rotation to the target rotation. We can set the interp speed to 100. For the delta time, we can get the world delta seconds and plug the return value. We actually want to actually split this and plug in just the Z value, that way we can only rotate on the Z axis, okay? So now let's go ahead and just add a comment. This is our rotate turret. Let's compile and save, and let's actually go ahead and test this out. So in order for this to actually work, we need to add this tag to our player character so that the turret can actually see us. So let's go to our third person blueprints character, and in here you wanna head over to the detail, search for tags, and under the actor tags, we wanna add that new tag called player. Make sure it's the same capitalization punctuation as what we put in this turret blueprint. So hit compile and let's drag in our new turret, the blueprint, and let's hit play. So if we run up to the turret, you can see it starts tracking. As soon as we get in the circle, the distance, you can actually track the player. If we run out of the radius, you can see it's still actually tracking the player. So in order for us to have stop tracking the player when we leave the range, what we need to do is set up the end overlap. Let's go to the Blueprint turret, you wanna select the sphere, scroll down. You want to add a event and overlap, so add that. Let's move this up here to our other overlap event. Okay, so when we finish overlapping with the player, we want to stop tracking the turret. So we're going to do a is valid, basically sort of the same setup. Make sure that the actor reference is valid, then check and see if the actor, actor has tag, if it's a player, 
and a new branch and hook that up for the condition. So if this is true, we want to actually get our target reference and convert this to a validated get. So if this reference is still valid, what we want to do is stop our timer. So stop this rotate turret timer. So we want to get this timer and do a clear and invalidate timer by handle. And in order to see our sphere radius in the level, what we can do is search for hidden and make sure that this is uncheck hidden in game so that we can actually see the sphere radius. Okay, so let's just add a comment for this logic. This is our when player leaves range, stop tracking target. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. So now we can actually see the range of the turret. If we move within the range, you can see it's tracking the player. If we move outside the range, you can see that it stops tracking, but it immediately picks up as soon as we enter in within the turret range. So now we need to add the firing logic so we can actually see the firing. So in order for that, we're going to actually download some particle effects. So I have this free military weapon dark over here. So you just want to extract this. I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's basically a free weapons pack with different muzzle flashes, particle effects, and sounds. It used to be free on the Unreal Marketplace, but they actually removed it and the seller hasn't updated the page, but it's still free for you to use commercially in your projects. So here's the military weapon dark. We're just going to browse to our content folder. So right click your content and do show an explorer that will pull up the project location on your hard drive. And then in here, in the content, you want to copy this military weapon dark and paste it in here. So just like that. So once you paste it in the content folder on your hard drive, you should see a new folder in here called military weapon dark. And we should have a new folder for FX. So you can see we have all the different particle effects, which is what we need. Another thing that we need to do is in our content folder, we also want to go in the turret because we need to get another particle effect. So in the project files from the description, I have this turret folder. In here, we have this FX. You wanna drag this into the content turret folder. So remember when I said to copy the naming convention, so we just copy and paste this in here. We should be able to see the FX smoke beam. I added this little smoke beam particle effect uh, that we're gonna use as well. Okay, so we have the military weapon VFX pack and the smoke beam as well. Let's go into our blueprint turret and set up the firing logic. So what we're gonna do is when we're rotating the turret and tracking the player, we're also gonna have another timer for shooting or firing. So we wanna add a, another set timer by event node in here and hook this up. And for this event, we're gonna drag all the way down here and add a custom event for our firing. This one will be called shoot turret. Okay, compile that and let's go ahead and make sure that we set the time here to every 0.3 seconds looping and max once per frame. Promote this and set this to our fire timer reference. So we have a reference to the firing timer so we can stop this timer when the player leaves the turret range. So let's go ahead and just do that right now. Let's get our fire timer clear and invalidate that timer. That way we will also stop firing off our fire timer. Okay. So down here in our shoot turret logic, we can set up the logic to spawn in the particle effect and do a little line trace. So first things first, we're gonna do a line trace to see if we can actually hit the player. So we're gonna do a line trace by channel. For the starting position, this will be our actor's location. So get actor location. And we're actually going to add a little value. So we're gonna do it. add operator add. We're gonna add 80 to the Z value. That way it'll be above the ground. Plug that in for the start. For the ending location, we're going to get our target actor reference and do a get actor location of our target and plug that in for the end. Okay, for the trace channel, this will be our camera. We're gonna do trace complex and you can draw a debug if you want to see that. If not, that's all good. But for our return value, we're going to add a branch whether or not we actually hit something. Okay, if we did hit something, we wanna get the hit result and break out the hit result because this will give us things like where we hit the location, the impact point and all that stuff. So the first thing we need to check is if whatever we hit is the actor a player. So off of here we want to get the actor has tag and check and see if this is a player and do a branch. So that will be our first condition. And then if it is a player we can go ahead and spawn in some particle effects. So we're going to do a spawn emitter attached and hook this up for the true. And for the emitter, we're going to search for our P assault rifle muzzle flash. So again, this is from the military weapons pack that you downloaded and we added to the project. For the component one attached to, we want to attach this to the turret top. For the socket, we're going to add a new socket called the fire socket. 
And let's go ahead and add this to our mesh before we forget. So you want to go to your turret mesh, open up, open up the SM underscore turret. And in here, we're going to add a socket on which we should add the muzzle flash. So under the socket manager, we can add a new socket. We want to call this the same exact socket that we named in the blueprint, which is fire socket. And for the location, I'm going to input some values. So I'm going to make it 125 over here on the Z, just like so. So that is the location for the socket should be right there at the end of the barrel. Okay, so, so in the turret blueprint, we're spawning it at that socket location. We just wanna make sure that we do snap to target and keep world scale, that way it will be snapped to that socket, okay? The next particle effect we wanna fire off is our smoke trail. So we wanna do a spawn emitter, another spawn emitter attached. This one will be our P underscore smoke trail. So again, this is another particle effect that we imported. The component we're going to attach to is to our turret top. This will be again our fire socket. But for this particle effect, the way that the smoke trail works is it's actually a beam particle. So you spawn in the particle, then you have to define the end location basically. So for that, uh, the particle effect has a parameter. So off of this return value, this is a reference to that particle effect that we spawn in. We can set the vector parameter for this particle. And that parameter name is called target test. That's what I named it. But for the parameter value, we're going to get the target's location and get the actor location and use that for this parameter. So let's go ahead and just plug this in like so. Okay, so we're using that actor location for this beam. So what the beam or the smoke trail will look like is it will have the spawn location and the end location, which will have a particle effect, sort of like a smoke trail from one location to the other. Okay, then the last particle effect we wanna spawn is for the actual hit effects. So if we hit the player, we wanna spawn a hit or impact particle effect. So we wanna add a spawn emitter at location. And for this emitter, we wanna use a P impact. So we have different impacts. I'm gonna use the P metal medium impact. For the location, we're gonna use the impact point. So remember we did this align trace over here, we can use the impact point wherever we hit and plug that in for the location for this emitter. Okay, so let's compile this and let's add a comment for all of this before we forget. So this is our line, fire line trace, see if hit player. And then over here, this is all of our particle effects. So let's add a comment for all of these. This is our spawn fire effects, beam effects, and impact effects, okay? So that is our logic. So now let's actually go ahead and give this a test. So now in addition to rotating the turret, we should also fire off this fire shoot turret event every 0.3 seconds, which will fire a line trace, see if we hit the player. If we do hit the player, we'll spawn a particle effect, we'll spawn the beam, and we'll spawn an impact at wherever we hit the player. So let's go ahead and hit play. And if we run up to the turret, you can see that it's shooting the player. It's gonna take a second to compile the shaders. But now that you can see it's compiled the shaders, so we have a particle effect that's attached to the turret, which is the muzzle flash. We have the beam, which is that little white line of smoke. And then we have the impact hit effects, which is hitting the player wherever the turret shoots the character, okay? And as you can see, it stops firing when we leave the turret range, because again, in the turret blueprint off of the event end overlap, we cleared and invalidate the fire timer. So that is our simple turret blueprint that tracks the player. And if you want, you can also test this by dragging in certain blocks. So if we wanted to take this block over here and alt drag this and scale this down, okay, we can move this like so and just create a wall but still be inside the turret range. If we hit play, we can test this out and you'll see that the turret can still track the player, but it won't be able to shoot the player unless they move out of this coverage, okay? So you could use this as you know a platformer game or whatever game you'd like and basically set this up so that you know the player can take damage. You can use and expand upon this, use a line trace for applying damage and modify it how you see fit. But that is it for this video, how to set up a simple turret blueprint inside of Unreal Engine 5.